I am Michael, KB9VBR, your host for Ham Radio Q&A. Thanks for joining me on these little amateur radio adventures. And please excuse my throat, I'm getting over a terrible cold. Well, you've seen these printed on QSO cards, but what do they mean? Well, I'm talking about grid squares, a unique method of geolocation popular with HF Digital and VHF and UHF operators. When I say unique, I mean the grid square system has the ability to convey your location down to the precision of about three and a half miles using only six characters. While that doesn't sound very precise, it's extremely useful and good enough for radio communications. But where did the grid square system come from and how does it work? Well, VHF operators have longed for a method of easily describing their location. Using geographic descriptors like region, state, or city aren't precise enough and take up valuable time in a contest exchange. So back in 1980, the VHF Working Group solicited proposals for an easily workable geolocation system to replace an older grid system that was very popular in Europe but had limitations for global uh, locations. What came out of this meeting in Maidenhead, England was a worldwide system that could represent location with limited precision using only a small number of characters. So how does it work? Well, the grid square system uses two character sets to break up the globe into a system of progressively smaller squares. At its coarsest level, the first two characters, called the grid, break things up into fields that are each 20 degrees of longitude by 10 degrees of latitude. But to visualize this, let's pull up on a map. The Soda Mapping Project has an excellent grid square map overlay that you can, you, you can view how the grid breaks up the world. Longitude starts at 180 degrees west, and each 20 degree chunk is given the letters A through R. The latitude starts at the South Pole and goes north in 10 degree segments using the letters B through R. The continental US is contained in about nine grids. So if I wanted to report my location in Wisconsin, I'd use grids letters E, N, or Echo November. The nine by 18 grid has 324 individual squares covering the earth. That's a pretty big chunk of area. So in order to break things down even more, the grid is broken into another set of squares. Each square is about two degrees of longitude and one degree of latitude, and numbered from zero to nine each. Longitude is the first number and latitude is the second. So with four characters, we now have a precision of about 70 miles. Since I live in north central Wisconsin, my grid lo and square locator would be EN54, Echo November 54. But is that enough precision? For some applications it might be, but VHF UHF contests will score contacts based on distance and two contacts could easily fall within the same grid and square. So squares are further broken down into smaller 20 by 20 fields. These fields are represented with two sets of lowercase letters from A to X for the longitude and the latitude. This gives us a precision of three and a half miles. So my complete locator which covers the south, southern half of Wausau, Wisconsin, is EN54EW. Echo November 54, Echo Whiskey. Now there's a, prov a provision to go into a deeper level using another 10 by 10 subfield, but it's seldom used. By this time, if you need that level of precision, you're better off using latitude and longitude anyways. The purpose of the grid system is to give an acceptable amount of precision using a limited number of characters and not to precisely define a location. So how do I find my grid locator? Well, QRZ.com will uh, calculate your grid based on your street address. The summits on the air mapping page will let you dynamically zoom into your location and show you your grid. Or most GPS units will calculate your, your grid locator. If you're using a GPS to find your grid, make sure, you're, make sure it's set to the WGS84 map datum. So when will you use the grid square system? Well, VHF and UHF contesting rely on exchanging grids as a part of their contest exchange. If you are planning to apply for some awards, like the VHF UHF Century Club, you'll need to track grid locators. Digital modes, like JT64 and Whisper, also use grid locators as part of their exchange. Anytime you need to convey a general location easily over the air, the grid square system will come in very handy. That, in a nutshell, is the Maidenhead Grid Locator. If you have questions, please leave a comment below. Do you know your grid? Share it in the comments, too. 
Links and resources can be, for this video can be found in the description. And as always, if you found this information useful, please give me a big thumbs up and, like, and hit that subscribe button so you get notified when more videos are released. I'm Michael, KB9VBR. Thanks for watching. Have a great day and 73.